Let's go through the process of when you're going up to a controller and you're going to go to do a maintenance. Just say the system has been running fine. What are the starting point? I know we talked about yesterday. The first thing we need to see is what's that supply voltage coming in. Do you want to yeah. walk through some other uh, steps? Yeah, sure. So as you've got marked there, supply voltage is going to be key to anything working on this controller. The chances are if you've got a problem on that, that screen is going to be blank when you walk up to it. So if this is, let's say, a cold store with six evaporators in it, they might not notice if one of them's gone off. So that's going to be your start point. Nothing is going to work unless you've got the 230 there. If you've got the 230 there and the display's on, what you'll see on the 550A, what you see on this controller, you can see the cooling and the fan lights are on to the left of the numbers. If it's in alarm, all four indicators, because there's the, the valve indicator and the defrost indicator, on the side there they'll all be flashing and we actually talked about this last night didn't we trevor the if you just touch the top button on the controller it'll give you status code for what the controller is doing and you want that to be telling you that it's in regulation or startup if that's giving you an alarm code straight off or it's giving you a status code saying it stopped then you know where to look around the rest of that controller assuming it's running but let's say for some reason it's not cooling hidden and underneath those probe wires <laughs> right yeah. there is the plug for the akv which is obviously dan foster's expansion valve uh there we go so as i said difference to the old dan Foss controllers all this is doing is taking the line voltage and switching it on and off for a big transistor so you're going to want to check that you've got a voltage going into that and that you've got a pulse coming out of it it's not going to be on see five and six there. So that's going to be your supply in and then your feed out to your valve. So you're not going to see on the output of that permanent voltage. What you're going to see is probably three, four seconds at the most on and then off and on and then off. The standard time scale of Danfoss works on is six seconds. So you will get a percentage of six seconds on depending on how much valve drive it's asking for. So yeah, just yeah. check you've got a voltage out to your coil. If you've got a voltage out to the coil and you're still not doing any cooling, then you're going to be at the coil end going, has my coil burnt out? You can take the coil off, do a continuity test on the coil. The exact value isn't really important. It's going to depend on what voltage your coil is, but you are going to want to see some resistance between the two pins. If it's dead short, you'll probably find it's damaged the controller. <laughs> but if it's open, then your coil's not going to work. Um, and, and you're going to need to replace the coil. And so you can do it from the controller, but just remember, you got to unplug it. And then if you do it from the, the controller, there's resistance in these lines. So who knows how long these lines are running, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. The best thing to do, if you get weird resistance from here, you got to go right to the coil itself. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense? And, and, that can, and that can totally happen because the, the coil plug, of course, has a rubber seal in it, but those rubber seals get old and hardened or somebody doesn't do the gland up on the back of the plug. And very, very common to get rust in the plug. That will either rot the connection away and you'll get no connection or you get a high resistance on it and it won't lift the valve. You won't generate enough to lift the valve.